The following is a presentation of the Control Trends Podcasting Network. One, two, three. Hi, this is Eric Strompos. Welcome to Control Talk Now, your smart buildings video cast and podcast for the week ending June 9th, 2019. This is episode 319 we talk about all things smart building controls and what would a smart building controls conversation be without your co-host and mine the man the myth the legend the one the only kenny smyers the control man from pittsburgh pennsylvania kenny welcome to the show am i getting better at that i'll keep working at it man (laughs) is it getting any better it is i have to start smiling because it's like i'm I'm, you know rocket man uh Elton John movie. Did you see that? Did you see that movie yet? Elton John. No, I, I want to. I want to see. We we just we just got into the Avengers. So man, my my t- my kids are so into the Avengers. It's awesome. But but I want real quick. I'm I'm, I'm practicing because we're kind of thinking about the Control Trends Awards. that's coming up. It's the same day as the Super Bowl in Orlando, and it's going to be the biggest Super Bowl party in the history of HVAC controls. And we'll throw the Control Trends Awards to boot. But what we're thinking about doing is, uh, you know, having the cheerleaders and everything. And, you know, it's going to be more casual this year. But we're thinking about doing is like if you're a platinum sponsor and EZIO has already signed on as one. So we'll, we'll use them as an example. So imagine everybody else is seated and then you get an announcer voice. And I don't know whether I'll do it. We might have to hire a professional announcer going. And now, please welcome to this. Welcome to the field. The team from EZIO, the purveyors of the Beast from the East, led by Captain Mike Marston and Johan Chakarad. And the cheerleaders are going, we got the music playing, and they come, you know, going into their table and so on and so forth. So let us know in comments if you think that's a good idea. Well, you know, I, uh, I think it's going to be, a, a, again, it's going to be the biggest Super Bowl party in Orlando. There's going to be 350 people there, and they're going to be in their football moods. But first, we're going to take them through the 2019 Control Trends Awards uh, our heroes, our superstars of our industry, and transition right into a super party because uh, you know, we have the facility lined up, and we've already worked with the uh, staff good. down there, and they're going to put the television. There's 21 televisions throughout the, the facility, but they're going to put two on stage, apparently, That's and gonna uh, awesome. they're going to be giant screens, and so there's not going to be a better place to watch the football game. Well, it is, and, and it's going to be like, uh, I mean, the Control Trends Awards are kind of be like the pregame show, right? So right. Like your own personal pregame show. So imagine – and. God, I'm just thinking, thinking out loud, Kenny, how much fun this could be. So imagine if we had uh, uh, two, two imitators, like in a Howard Cosell imitator or whatever, and then in between when people are walking up to receive their awards instead of uh, playing music, it's like, well, I didn't see that one coming. Did you, Kenny? Well, no, but you know, you got to know that this guy has been doing so-and-so and so-and-so, or maybe a John Gruden imitator or something. Like that. We're going to come up with some, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. It's going to be memorable. So, uh, uh-huh. Sounds. Right, I, well, I'm looking forward. What well, you know, it's it's happening, and as we talk to more and more sponsors, and we're getting support. Uh, it's always a good feeling to know that uh, you know we're on the right track. People people think it's a great idea because uh, they're going to do something, and nobody wants to miss the Super Bowl. So to give them a place that uh, they're going to have a nice fixed firm place where they can take their customers, enjoy the, you know, enjoy the audience of the control trends awards and then have a Super Bowl party. And you know, this is the BB Kings club. So they're going to have the music, they're going to have the food and, and all the uh, beverages and uh, refreshments that, uh, you know, you can get anywhere else. You're going to have them there. And uh, so it'll save a lot of traveling. I mean, it's just going to be a super compact evening. Yeah. And it's, it's going to be where gonna be near everybody's staying because it's going to be near the convention center. Uh, for AHR, so it's yeah, it's about uh, so half a mile, half a mile down International uh, was it after International Road or Boulevard International Road. International Boulevard, but it, right. it, 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 it's it's kind of rock and roll. But dude, uh, we are getting ready to uh, talk about it on the road again. You and I are getting ready to go up to Nashville. But before we do that, this show is brought to you by uh, two sponsors this week, and we mentioned on the last show that Kenny and I are opening up uh, Control Trends for sponsorships specifically the Smart Buildings video cast and podcast show. So if you're interested in that, uh, reach out to me or Kenny, CT for Control Trends, Marketing Pro at gmail.com. CT, Marketing Pro at gmail.com. We'll get you the details. But Kenny, tell us who our sponsors are for this week's episode. I'd love to. This episode of Control Talk Now is brought to you by DG Lux. And DG Lux is really excited about their project assist. Uh, the robust graphical applications to monitor and analyze building data, DG Lux 5, uh, we see a whole new surge from d I mean, these guys have been around a long time. They're the professionals in presentation and visual data. And now they've got, uh, they've really uh, brought 
more technology to bear and it's even better. So please check that out. We have a link on the site and also EasyIO. Uh, we came back from the world conference. Uh, it was uh, an amazing event. Got to see all the, the, uh, the hierarchy of EasyIO uh, from all over the world, Malaysia. Mike Marston was in there. Lim Hoon Chat, uh, Ernst was there. Uh, and then the European contingent with Johan and his team and Gil, uh, what's his name? The, your, your favorite guy, the handball player. Guido. Oh, well, Guido. Yeah, Guido <laughs> is great. And of course, Gina Elliott, who's running the North American operations for him now. So uh, absolutely really appreciate easy IO support. Uh, they've, we sort of have been with them since day one and vice versa. I mean, uh, Mike and Lim, uh, I, mean, I think the first people to sign up as control tent towards the sponsors as soon as we got started and they did that. And another one that signed up every year was uh, Eugene Mazo and the team from DG Lux, him and Arthur, uh, we call them the men in black. So these are good folks. Uh, they take good care of people. They've got great products. They're very innovative. And like you say, it's great to see uh, the men in black DG Lux back. And uh, so definitely check them out. Uh, we'll put a link and uh, the show notes for both of these companies. And uh, with that, Kenny Smyers, you and I are getting ready to go on the road, Willie Nelson style, again next week. So tell our audience where we're going to be going. Well, we're going down to Nashville, Tennessee, to the Music City Hall, and we're going to attend the IBCon RealCom 2019 conference. And again, this is, uh, I mean, you talk about smart, connected, high-performance, intelligent buildings and what uh, is entailed there. This is, this is going to be, uh, a mecca of, of technology innovation. Uh, I've talked to hundreds of people now uh, through, throughout the United States uh, that are going to this. And, uh, and we just had um, uh, Roger Rebenak and his team's coming down from uh, Indianapolis uh, because uh, they re realized the value of being there. I mean, it's got it all. It's got the, uh, the networking. I mean, the, the case studies that they have in the buildings of smart connected buildings are, are probably the most outstanding grouping of, you know, you know, Missouri style show me, uh, you know, case studies where you can go in and talk to folks that helped install it, helped, you know, pick out the solutions and own the buildings and, and they can provide testament of what you could do first steps. I think the biggest thing that Jim Young and Howard Berger always, you know, they've got this great, um, uh, solution, uh, presentation, but, the, it seems to be, that's always that first step. And, the way I understand it is there's probably a large percentage of people that after they come here, they, they're very, very confident in taking that first step, going back to hometown USA and going back to their, their buildings or their businesses and saying, you know what, the next time we do something, we're going to do it this way. We're going to start to begin our, our, our smart connected building, intelligent building, make our building smarter. And we're going to do it with the next installment. The next time we make the choice and payment, we saw a great article come out of Europe. Uh, Mike Dolly, um, you're supposed to Mike help me out Salvador there. Dolly Welch with Dolly Lighting. There you go. No, but he he's, put a great article out on the 330, 300, 3000 metric. So the Jones Lang and the Cell has in, enlarged that, uh, that concept of their metric on how much energy costs you per square foot, how much overhead, and how much uh, you know, occupancy, uh, you know, productivity. Well, now uh, there's another metric added to that, that $3,000, that if you have a smart, intelligent, total room automation style facility, you're likely to really uh, produce incredible dividends and, and, and really get, a, 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 you know, spectacular performance uh, metrics are now, uh, you know, what everybody's looking for. So everything that you always said, you, you have to have the basics, you have to have quality, you have to have a good app, you have to have, you have to have that just to be in the conversation. But now... How do you get it to, to, to the end user? How do you get to the facility manager? This show, IBCom Realcom, is how you do it. Well, listen, I got to tell you, and I put a post up this week about, um, you know, this is the year you want to go. And it, to be candid with you, it's probably too late. You might be able to get in. We've got a link there because we had a Control Trends uh, special where you could get a discount. It might be too late. So, but two things. Uh, watch this video uh, uh, that we, we posted. Read the post because I, I think Jim Young is basically saying in the video, highlights that we put up that Microsoft is coming out with something that's just going to, he says is going to rock the industry to its core. And, and like anything else, when somebody is disruptive, uh, it's, it's either an opportunity or it's a nail in your coffin. And that sort of depends on you. So we kind of realize that you're not going to probably be able to get there if you're not already going. So uh, Kenny and I can do everything we can to bring the conference to you. We're going to live stream as much as we can. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel because we'll be using YouTube Live to stream as much as we can. So it's not as good as being there, but it's close as good, close as good to be in there. 
And, uh, you know, again, the knowledge we use and to listen to Jim talking, we've known Jim for a while, Kenny. Um, Mm -hmm. And I've never heard him this definitive about something that he thinks is going to really, really change everything. And it kind of reminded me of uh, what it must have been like back in the early days. And I think it was 1975 when um, Microsoft got founded. I mean, we put a picture of uh, Paul Allen and Bill Gates and they must have thought those guys had three heads. They kind of look like they didn't have so much hair back then. That, uh, but, you know, you sort of wonder, what would you have done? I mean, if you could be transported back in time, you know, your, your business, your, all your priorities and so on and so forth. I mean, would you have given them the time of day? I don't think I would have. I think I would have just said, I'm too busy. This doesn't make sense. I'll catch it on the flip side. But, but if you had been one of those that said, I'm going to take the time to try to understand this, your life could be completely different. And my question is, if Jim's to be believed, which I think he is, I mean, he's one of the brightest guys around and he's, this is not his first rodeo. Is this going to be one of those definitive moments that if, if you're paying attention, you can capitalize on it? Well, uh, to your point, uh, and he, and Jim says that in the video, but you know, we, we called him a prophet because of, of some of the predictions he's made. Now we're actually living through them and, and living within them, uh, you know, as far as how it affected the industry. I mean, I remember uh, once he said something about, you know, at this Realcom IBCon networking uh, event, people buy businesses and whatever. And, and we've seen several acquisitions and several mergers that have occurred to it. It's almost like, uh, you know, it's unbelievable now. Uh, so he believes that this, uh, presentation, especially with Microsoft, is going to change the way people look at the building business itself and, and the partnerships that are being formed within it. In other words, you used to have our own HVAC industry and, and they had their facility management industry and, and you know, there was intelligent buildings you know, that were to do the real estate people. Well, the convergence now is all happening at these events. And what's ha- what I think is going to happen is there's going to be partnerships introduced there that are going to be so compelling that they're going to look for new channels. They're going to establish channels of how these things are going to get done. So, you know, they've got this potential, this cloud solution. We've got these, you know, he said there's a pavilion of 32 corporations and, you know, A, B, and B, Honeywell. Just East, in the Microsoft pavilion. Just in the Microsoft pavilion. So, I mean, that shows you from eight to 32, something substantial has happened and something of very, uh, you know, a magnitude and importance is, 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 is alive and, and, and going to be present at this show. And, and it's almost like being, uh, seeing a great concert or something. I mean, if, if, if you, do, if you can get there and see it in person, you'll have a, it'll impact you a certain way. If you can't, then please, you know, check with control trends uh, and we'll, we'll Right. You know, we're going to do our best to you know convey that information, but yeah, it's exciting because you know I mean that's 2019 now, and uh, you know I just I just had my car inspected and I got a sticker on my car that says 2020. I'm thinking nice. 2020 though. I mean I mean it's just that, 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 it's just a strange date, you know. It's like something out of a movie or something, you know. But we're just going through time. You know, t- hey man, the, the decade of the 20s is going to be our decade, baby. We're going to rock and roll. We're going to make it happen, man. We're not getting older. <laughs> we're getting younger. We're not getting well. We are probably getting uglier, but we like to think we're getting better looking. But, you know, speaking of that, man, you know, you talk about this show, Kenny. It's, it's the only show I know that you can learn about the latest technologies, right? And it's kind of unfiltered because it's not like a manufacturer. It's not like a particular manufacturer's conference. Mm-hmm. It's all about, um, uh, you know, the best technology available. But then the customers are there. That's the huge, huge thing. It is. Right there. And I got, I got to ask, do you remember it was San Antonio? I mean, we're sitting there at a cybersecurity breakout session, right? Mm-hmm. And there's this guy sitting in front of us. We didn't notice the guy first. I got to confess, he had this really beautiful assistant, you know, all dressed up business like beautiful hair and all that. She's taking notes. And so we're looking at her and we kind of look, well, who she's sitting with? And this guy's got the slick back hair. He's got the braces on and all that stuff. And so, of course, you know, when the break comes up, we're curious about when the break comes up, Kenny and I go up and talk to the guy because we really want to just find out what's the story on the girl is, right? And uh, this guy is, he owns real estate, commercial real estate. And we got to talk about one of the jobs in Atlanta we've done, which is a huge bank building. And he sort of said, well, you know, what are some jobs you've done in Atlanta? I've got some properties in Atlanta. And I tell him, he goes, yeah, I own that building. I mean, where else are you going to find something like that, right? Well, yeah. So the, uh, the networking opportunities are incredible. And, uh, you know, I've seen people, uh, change jobs. I've seen, I don't know if that's good or bad for an employee to hear, but, but no, it's just, it's a go-to place. It is the Mecca of intelligent buildings and uh, it's growing in 
uh, magnitude. In other words, I think that, uh, you know, we, we remember if we met Dave Lorenzini, we saw the first Google Glasses. We saw, we saw the technology. We saw the uh, drone presentation on the stage that was, right. was incredible because, I mean, I'd never seen a drone up close. Yeah, and then the it was guy still, that invented Google Glasses and Kenny and I are hanging out with him. And you could have too. <laughs> it was cool. I mean, but, you know, it was at the RealCom Ibicon. So I'm, uh, Jim was saying that there's uh, some incredible stuff. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the RealCom Edge book. This, this book by itself uh, is worth, uh, you know, it's weight in gold because the, right. the new buzzwords and new technology is being captured inside of a, a very condensed book. Uh, it makes anybody that reads this thing more intelligent about the industry, you know, and, and about the success stories. And again, going back to all these things that are here and that impressed me the most, the case studies are, are what's really probably the smart building best practices showcase. This is where you go down and they have Ford land energy pushes the envelope enabling energy efficient smart campuses, SAS smart campus and another thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's loaded with them so that you, whether you're in a high school uh, facilities management uh, or you're in college, uh, you know, university campus management. And, you know, also now the, the, the new things with cybersecurity. I mean, there's going to be some solutions down there. There's a vendors uh, area uh, that, you know, uh, we saw who's those people aware last year. Yeah. We, uh, and he went from that show uh, astronomically. We had him on the launch pad, remember? Yeah, and it was because of us. Well, uh, he's genius uh, in his own own right, and he he solved a problem that was affecting his his family. His kids were uh, subject to all these allergies and and uh, the VOCs that are in the air, and he created a sensor that uh, you know gives you uh, you know an accurate measurement of what your your VOC level is, and, and you know and then you can take action, fresh air or better filters or whatever you're going to do to react to it. But he. Uh, got a, I think I think he got started there. I mean, because now he's in, it's in every magazine. It's everywhere I look. Engineered systems everywhere. And uh, at one time, I think he was looking at distribution as, as a channel, but he probably went direct because that because we sensor launch. <laughs> that sensor didn't require a whole lot of uh, you know uh, support and and you know things that you have to create a you know maybe a two step yeah. uh, proposition. Or he just sold directly to the market, and I think he's kicking butt. Well, I think he is too, dude. And, and, uh, but again, you know, it's, I think it gets back to something we've talked about on the show a lot is you can have the greatest product in the world, but if people don't understand what it is or don't know about it, it's not going to do you any good. That's where Kenny and I are good. We're the game show hosts of the industry, man. We're the king makers. You want us to get oh. your product on, man. We'll rock and roll. And speaking of that, Kenny, we've got an awesome guest teed up. He's ready to rock and roll. So I'm about to introduce him. I'd love to, Eric. Uh, this is a real industry veteran of substantial experience. I mean, he's got 38 years in the industry, uh, and he's young and energetic still. Doug Miller, uh, lead AP, vice president of sales for KMCs. Welcome to the show, Doug. Welcome, Doug. Thank you, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I couldn't tell you how thrilled I was when Eric called me and asked me to join the show. Uh, you guys are iconic in our industry, what you do, what you've been doing in the control trends world. I mean, you guys really elevate us to the status of superstardom, as Eric, Eric puts it all the time. So I'm absolutely tickled pink to be here. All right. Well, Doug, thank you so much. We're so glad to have you here. And, and who's that over your right hand? Is that a picture of you back when you played football at Michigan State? Yeah, I wish. No, that's the uh, that's the immortal Desmond Howard when he ran the punt back against Ohio State in November of 1991. I happened to be at that game, actually. Were you really? Wow. Yeah, he came running right at me. It was great. He did the uh, Heisman pose right in front of the Ohio State fans. Oh, oh, yeah. We all did that. Uh, everybody practiced doing their Heisman. That, that was a, a fad for about two years. Every time somebody did something, they did the Heisman. Yeah, yeah. and there's the, he's the man that started it all. So. Yeah. Well, well, Doug, let me ask you a question. Let's sort of set the frame for our, our community here because you've been around the industry for quite some time, you know, like Kenny and I have uh, as well. So walk our community a little bit through your career and sort of um, how you got in controls and what you've been doing. Sure, absolutely. You know, uh, well, back in the days, Eric, when you and I both had hair, and I started to <laughs> um, actually put myself through college working for an HVAC and mechanical contractor running service and installs. And um, I joined Honeywell in the very early 80s, and I spent 11 years with Honeywell. I left Honeywell and spent seven with Siemens, uh, subsequently three with Johnson Controls, and four with the Train Corporation, all prior to joining KMC. And I've been at KMC now for 13 years. So if you're doing the math, that's 38 years. And I've had a lot of titles over those 38 years. I've been a tech in the field, a project, project manager, an applications engineer, an operations manager, service manager, branch manager, pick a title. So I've seen the industry from a number of different perspectives over that 38 years. Wow. Well, that, that's pretty, pretty special. Don't look that old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you, you, do, you don't, but, you know, what Kenny and I try to tell people when we recruit them to the industry is, you know, controls guys don't get old. We just get better looking as we get older. 
Oh, you know what they say, Eric, they don't put marble tops on cheap furniture. There you go, brother. There you go. I love it. Well, so listen, you're kind of uniquely qualified to talk about KMC, given the background you, you've had with all some of the major players. What is it about KMC that not only attracted you, but that's kept you for 13 years? Well, that's a great question. And, you know, I mean, there's never been a better time to be at KMC. We're, we're celebrating our 50 year anniversary this year, actually. And nice. It's nice. I mean, we've had some, you know, we've had exponential growth over the past few years, and that's been a good problem to have. Um, we've got some really great new system integrator partners. We've got some excellent new OEM relationships uh, that are coming up. Uh, we've got some new OEM contracts that we're developing right now. Actually, the company got started in OEM. A lot of people don't know that. It's still probably 35% of our revenue stream. And um, it's been a, a great business for us. We've got some new sales team members. But more importantly, I think the thing I really love about it is, you know, we're an American-owned, American-made company. The products are made right in Indiana in the breadbasket of America by American workers. And, and Eric, I think you've been to our factory. It's it's an extremely impressive place. It really is. Um, we bring folks there, and they're always amazed at what we can do in the middle of a cornfield in northern Indiana. The, tech, the technology we have is just great. I'm just well, no, no, it is. And I think what impresses me more than anything else uh, is sort of the family values, right? You got Eric Kruder, who is what the grandson of the founder Correct. of, uh, of, of, of uh, KMC controls. And, you know, for our, our older guys, you, if you remember like the velocity reset controllers and a lot of the pneumatics, I mean, that was Kruder that made those. Those are still out there. And, and the fact that they're out there and they never break, uh, you know, it's kind of a testament to the quality, but uh, speak about the values, if you will, because that's really, the technology's impressed me. We're going to talk a lot about that. The products have impressed me a lot, but what impresses me more than anything is, you know, like I said, the values. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and that's one of the things about the organization that's great is it is a family run business. And, you know, you walk out on the production floor and the owners know everybody out there. Most of them they know by first name. Uh, they've been employees of our company for a very long period of time. We have very little turnover. People start working at KMC and they typically retire from KMC on, on the manufacturing area. I couldn't be more proud of those folks there. They're all dedicated and passionate about what they do. They genuinely care about the product that they're building and shipping out the door. And those values show in the fact that we have such a small percentage of returns. We make a great product. Well, I think you guys do. And the fact that it's American made, and I don't want to get political on this show. And Kenny, I'm gonna let you ask a question after this, because I'm just Doug and I are like old friends, man. So we're catching up. But, uh, but, but I think you guys have already been very, very price competitive. But uh, I have a feeling that gap might widen a little bit just because you guys are made in the your products are made in the US and some with some of the impending tariffs on some of the others. Uh, it seems like not only are you guys gonna have quality, but you're gonna have a pricing advantage as well. Yeah, you know, I think that's a very good possibility. Um, we've certainly been approached uh, more so than ever by some folks that simply can't get product in the normal channels that they need to get them in. And they've come to us and say, hey, can you help us get this? Because we have an order for X number of these we got to fill and we can't do it. So there's some advantages there, no doubt. Well, it sure is. Uh, in fact, uh, this, uh, what is it, the tariff uh Section 232 tariff is going to change a lot of people's business models because it's going to be a substantial impact. The thing that I've always enjoyed about the KMC, and I've, I've, I remember being uh, mildly surprised sometimes when I found out that KMC was making this product for this manufacturer, you know, <laughs> this relabeling this manufacturer. And according to the pneumatics, uh, uh, one of the, the – uh, not really a surprise, but it was a testament to the quality. And I think you put out the first five-year warranty. All, all your products are warrantied for five years, right? Yeah. But um, I think in this day and age right now, manufacturers have a problem. So the distributors trying to solve solution selling versus product selling. Back in the old days, things were easy because you were selling products. The product, you go through the future feature benefit list, and it was pretty self-explanatory and, and easy. Now we're selling solutions. I think where KMC has really moved their needle uh, in a different direction was that you guys are very good at selling solutions. Tell us about some of your favorite solutions at KMC. Well, thanks, Ken. I, I, I do appreciate that. And you know, we, we have um, some things that they address a marketplace need. You know, it's real easy to, to push a product out there and say, hey, look, we made this fancy new widget. But the real value add comes in. How do you take that and incorporate it into meeting the need of a customer? Um, we recently had a, a situation with uh, a school district down in Florida. And uh, they were 
their production, their food production area where they make lunches for the students and that type of thing, um, they were using a lot of energy, but they weren't quite sure how to separate out how much energy they were really using. So we went in and, and overlaid the, our commander solution on top of that. We were able to actually monitor and track the energy usage of the, the food production facilities. And so what that allowed the district to do was then set up a billing network that could actually bill that department within the district for the energy they were using in the facility. Well, that's that's really cool. I uh, like I said, I'm keeping track and like um, I'm on your website right now. It's a great website too, and uh, you have a lot of really a lot of good information for people that need information about controls and whatever. One of my favorite little reference books is uh, this little KMC Commander book. I got I got this at this show one time, and I still use it when I'm trying to write something. And I want to make sure I get the the terminology right. So oh yeah, yeah. The uh, Green Building and Controls Glossary. But, yeah, Doug, I think another thing that KMC did uh, early on was took the initiative of, of the concept of collaboration. You got involved with uh, two very serious uh, industry players, Dell and Intel, that are you know, obviously really good at what they do, and you incorporated, incorporated that into the KMC uh, world. Tell us about that, that story. Yeah, it's a really unique story. It's kind of cool. Um, we were at the RealCom IBCon conference a few years back, and um, you know they had a panel discussion up front, and they had Dell and Intel and all the big IT players there. And, and uh, Richard Newberry, our CEO, was in the audience at the time, and uh, he was listening to what they were talking about, and you know something clicked in his head, right? The wheels started turning. He said, "Wow, yeah, we need to be a part of that. I need to get involved in that." And he had literally just come back to the organization after a little bit of a hiatus. He didn't even have business cards yet. So he grabbed somebody else's business card, wrote his name on the back, gave it to some people and said, I really want to talk to him about this. And, and uh, that's kind of where it went. And, you know, he kept following up and following up and trying to get a hold of the right people. And, you know, he just, you know, just get the standard gatekeeper run around type scenario. And then one day out of the blue, a call came into the switchboard and they, you know, somebody from Intel called us and said, hey, um, there was a guy that showed up and he had dark glasses and he was at our meeting. We really don't remember what his name was. We want to talk to him about this. <laughs> and of course, we meet. As soon as they said the dark glasses, right? We all knew that was Richard. Yeah. So they put him on hold. And they kind of ran down the hall into Richard's office and uh, I got somebody from Intel on the phone, and I think they want to talk to you. So <laughs> that, that's really kind of how it all started, just through Richard's persistence. Well, well and, you cool. know, and, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. And, you know, Doug, you, you and I and Kenny all came up through the sales ranks. And, you know, there's, there's really something to say for being persistent and for following up. I mean, I'm amazed at how many people uh, get discouraged early on and, and don't accomplish great things. But I think it's a testament to the values of KMC that, you know, you got the CEO who is, uh, you know, working, 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 following up, following up, following up, not getting anywhere, not getting anywhere, but he doesn't give up. And uh, so I, I kind of bring that up as a framework because my experience, and we're a distributor of KMC and we, we love the product. My experience of working with you guys is that uh, you get that same kind of persistence and follow up uh, when you're a customer of KMCs as well. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, you know, our, our mantra is inter integrative and intuitive solutions for responsive and supportive people. And that's not just a buzz phrase for us. We really do live that. Um, our people are responsive. They are supportive. And, you know, we, we are, we're not the biggest name in the industry. We realize that. But we make up for that by our responsiveness and innovative products. Well, dude, I want to talk to you because you got two great videos that I want to make sure that our community uh, sort of taps into. And I'm going to set, set one up and and then I'll ask you to respond on that later. But uh, the first one is uh, on your website. You got Richard Newberry. It's a cool black and white video. Uh, and, and it talks about, uh, you know, Dell and Intel and KMC and that partnership. And I'm, I'm a big fan of black and white. If you go to control trends, anytime I shoot something in black and white, I do. So sure. kudos for the video. It was great. But Richard talks about the fact that there are 5 million buildings, I think it was 5 million, that don't have uh, proper energy solutions and they're wasting a ton of energy. It was in the bil millions or billions, I forget. But he, he talks about it in the short little video. And uh, he's sort of setting the framework up with this collaboration with Dell and Intel and KMC. You guys, as he says, you're providing an, an affordable solution that anybody can afford. So I want you to respond to that. The second one you don't have to respond to go, other than to go, of course, that's why we did that. The second one is a video we'll talk about in a minute, which is I think was shot at AHR. Uh, it was kind of going through the Conquest product line. And there's a B-roll footage because you're talking about how you can do the near field uh, uh, thing. Yeah, near field communications. And, there, and there's somebody sitting there with a smartphone. 
and I'm, I go, that shirt looks real familiar and the name tag looks familiar. So I want to know who took my shirt and my name tag for that video. <laughs> well, okay, in reverse order, um, that was probably Tim Vogel at the time would be my guess on that. But, you know, I don't know that for sure. No, I think it was me. You just didn't see the face. Because, you know, oh, you know Tim, Tim no, I have a much more buff body than Tim did. So I'm sure he wanted to use <laughs> – I was like a body double. I can add that to my resume now. You've confirmed that for me. But go ahead. Okay. All right. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, the, the video that, um, that Richard did, uh, that was great. I mean, we get a lot of hits on that because – it is a fact, and that's one of the driving factors to just the incredible market acceptance we've had of Commander. There are a lot of buildings out there right now, five million of them to be specific, that don't have any type of automation or HVAC control system in them. And simply because there isn't an affordable solution for that space. And our goal with Commander was to design something that was market ready, easily deployable, you know, that you could deploy by somebody who doesn't have HVAC or vast computer skills. They can go in, get this thing set up, get it up and talking, pushed out, data to the cloud, and on someone's mobile device, you know, in, in a matter of a day. I, the industry is going, the world is going, really, towards everything is mobile. Everybody wants everything on their phone. I bought a window air conditioner for my house recently, and there's a mobile app for that now. I can control my mobile phone or my, mobile, my window air conditioner with a mobile phone. So it's just an example of, of how everything is moving to that mobile platform. And, of course, when you get into those scenarios, um, now security is always the question, right? Everything, you know, the whole, unfortunately, the whole thing that happened with Target a few years ago kind of thrust us in the controls industry into a spotlight we really didn't want to be in. Uh, but we're there now, and it was inevitable that we went there. And so security is obviously a very important issue. We've built in several layers of that in the Commander. We've written white papers on it, and we find ourselves a lot of times now, and I'm sure it's not unique to us, anybody that operates in the IoT space, we're finding ourselves inside of, CIO or IT offices explaining what we're putting on our network, what it's going to do, and how it's going to function when we're there. Because it's a concern. Sure. <clears throat> well, and, and uh, I think, again, uh, having that concern and, and, and engineering your product to meet those concerns. But, uh, again, the, the, the whole concept of IoT, I think you guys at KMC had the understanding of where things were going. In fact, uh, I just wanted to review the history a little bit. Uh, last year, you all were recognized by CRN, the brand of the channel company, the named KMC is one of the top 50 companies, corporations in the United States that really get the Internet of Things. You made it to that list, the top 50 of the Internet of Things list, which recognizes companies whose innovative offerings help connect objects, computing devices, infrastructure, data storage. So the, where do you see this all going to, uh, Doug? I, I mean, we've got, again, we, we talked about pneumatics, the, the, uh, the CSC 2000, what was that? The receiver? 2011. CSC 3011. <laughs> I mean, 3011. That, that thing, I still remember it. Is, uh, it we sold just hundreds of them. The stop now sign. Now we're talking about, yeah, the stop sign, exactly. And, and now we're talking about IoT, but now we're talking about, you know, the inclusion of Dell and Intel. Where we, and then there's 5 million buildings out there, and KMC has a full portfolio of solutions that are modular, scalable, and, and ready to go. Where, where do you see us all going to be? It's 2019. How is this unfolding? Are we going to make progress? Are we going to get there and see the, the IoT really get fully deployed? Or what, what's your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. I, I don't think it's, it's a matter of if. It's just a matter of how fast it gets here, truthfully. I agree. Um, you know, depending on the numbers you believe in here, but there's going to be billions of devices that are going to be Internet connected and connectivity. Um, and it happens all I just talked about my window air conditioner. It happens all the time. And with each of those layers, we're seeing the intelligence being pushed further out to the edge all the time. Um, you know, our controllers, we have scheduling, trending, alarming right at the edge, right at the final unitary device. And, and those layers are going to continue to grow. We're going to see that deployed even further out. Um, I don't think, again, it's not a matter of uh, if it's going to be here. It's a matter of how fast it comes. We saw that early on. We're definitely becoming a part of that. Um, there's just so many ways this thing can diversify itself uh, as it incorporates other systems. Because for a long time, we've always incorporated our world, right, the HVAC. Well, it's so easy now to integrate things like lighting and landscape irrigation and solar and wind and all these other things that have been a part of the green building industry. Let's tie those all together into a smart building. Well, that uh, very, great. very cool. Well, and well, you know, we've been to covered several of your conferences, which I encourage our community. And if, if you ever get to go to a KMC conference, they're fantastic. Uh, you guys always have great speakers. It's insightful. And you know, one of the things that I think is 
a huge expense for all of us is getting the product sold. And here was something that I heard the Dell guys say, and uh, it might have been Intel as well, but, you know, those guys are out selling IoT solutions. I mean, you know, they, they see that what a huge market it is. So one of the cool benefits, I think, of being a KMC partner is if those guys are out there and they're going to bring the building controls in, that's going to be a referral uh, flow for, for KMC partners. Is that, did I get that right? No, that's absolutely right. That is how it works, Eric. I mean, uh, Intel and Dell, for that matter, they have literally thousands of salespeople out there, and they get into spaces that we don't get into. It, it's right. just nature of the beast. And again, it, it's a nice thing for them because this is another arrow in their quiver that they can bring a full service solution to their partners, and it's a, it's a piece of the arsenal that comes out to be a referral for our system integrators. Like, hey, you know, Intel ran into this thing, and you can go in there, and you've got an opportunity to build a survey, maybe install some additional gear. So it's an easy way to pick the low hanging fruit. Um, interestingly enough, and I can't pull the curtain back too far on this yet because uh, it's still not fully baked, but we're about to enter into a partnership with a major player in the IT space right now that's going to even further that for us. Wow. Wow. Well, well, well that's great. Well, listen, just real quick, Kane, before you ask the next question, for our friends at Intel that are out there selling and for our Michael Dell, I know Mike listens to the show. Listen, when you get those, uh, those solutions, we need to bring a building automation specialist in. There are only two words you need to remember, which is stromquist.com. Because Doug will tell you, we're one of his favorite partners, if not his favorite. Doug, yeah. I know you can't say that, but that's all right. I'm not the guy who's going to punk you at the end and say, you know, and say Scott Cochran, okay? <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, Scott's, Scott's a good third choice. I mean, there's yeah. Astrid, Kenny, and then there's Scott. So, yeah. yeah, well, yeah you know, I, I just remember you got punked in a video. Somebody did that to you. So I just thought I'd bring it back up. Yeah, so that's good. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're following our stuff. I guess what I love about you, buddy, you're following our stuff. You've been around. And how you remember the W7600 days when you were in Honeywell. So uh, I actually installed and programmed a few. Me too, believe it or not. So, uh, but anyway, that, but you know, your product sort of harkens back to that. I want to cycle back to the uh, commander just for a minute. It harkens back to that a little bit because the cool thing about the W7600 was it was geared for the light commercial space. Mm -hmm. It was easy to program. It was flexible. It wasn't overly complicated, although theirs was pretty expensive, relatively speaking. But with the commander, getting back to your light for lack of a better term, light commercial solution is really for that 5 million uh, buildings. It's, it, it's, it's, it's inexpensive, it's powerful, it's very easy to use to work with, and to the, to the point that I have heard, and I want confirmation from you on this, that there are several service contractors out there that actually will, if you sign a service agreement, they'll actually put one of those in for free because it allows them to, to offer better service uh, and, and give all kinds of additional uh, features to the building owner. So uh, I've heard several people are doing that. Yeah, that is actually a fact. Um, we do have several of our system integrators, particularly the ones that are more service industry focused uh, that do that. One of the, the branch managers in the organization actually made it a mandate uh, to all of the service salespeople that every new service contract they sell will have a commander as part of the install. And it really makes good business sense for them because if I'm going to go in and, and, and do a full service maintenance contract on somebody and I'm responsible for the compressors and fans and all the other mechanical gear, if I can have an early eye, early eyes on that system and know what's going on before there's a failure, then it makes it my life much simpler. I can control my costs better and my value add to the customer is very easy to prove at that stage of the game because I'm fixing things and solving problems he needs or he has before he knew he had it. Listen, I, I definitely want, I want to just, I want to hit a couple more points on this because we have a huge uh, amount, huge group of the people that listen to us are HVAC service techs and HVAC service companies. Now, I, what I want to get at is, you know, from what I know about the service business, it's very predictable. You've got a service contract. Every service contract you have, you know you're going to get X amount of dollars in upgrades, X amount of dollars in, in equipment replacements and stuff like that. So they guard those service contracts like, you know, with their lives because it really is the bane of, not the bane, but it is, it's what makes your business go round and round. And in the past, when I've talked to service contractors about, you know, putting in automation controls, they didn't want to do it because they didn't want to risk losing that business 
because the system didn't work. And what I would say now, and I'd like to get your opinion on this and yours too, Kenny, is it's almost like if you don't at least offer that now to your service contractors, you're in jeopardy of losing. It's more risky not to offer that. I mean, more, yeah, not to offer it than it is to actually offer it. And the reason I say that is because it drives your cost to serve down. They are expecting things because you get so much information from things like their smartphones and stuff like that. And also, uh, you know, it allows you to be more predictive. Like you say, you can, and if you don't do it, somebody else is going to offer it. So I think it's more risky not to offer something like the commander. Agree or disagree? Go ahead, Ken. Well, you know, I, I was going to get to that. And uh, I, 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 see, I, I think, uh, and, and Doug, I kind of said, Jeff, because I, I was trying to transition into that managed services that y'all had begin to open up our minds. So one of the important things that KMC meetings do is they're concerned about their partners being aware of where the trends are coming, what's coming down the pike, and where you better start moving some chips over on the side and learn a little bit more about IT, get some exposure in certain areas. But there was a term where uh, you had a, one, of, one of your uh, partners that came there uh, was telling us about the he was in growth facilities. And he started out, he wasn't even in HVAC or building automation. He was coming in as the managed service provider for the IT stuff, the printers, the, the computers, and the networks and whatever. And then he, he stumbled into some of the issues that we were having in the building automation, how we were being resistant and temperamental about learning new New, new technologies and we realized what, what and this was probably what four years ago it was in Chicago I think the meeting it was I'm talking Luis about. Alvarez wasn't it yes uh, it was yeah. but but it was, it was and never since then it, it stuck in my mind because now uh, you know the the things that we're talking about are all you know solutions selling uh, you know cross selling collaboration selling building solutions you know and and really you guys were early on that conversation but that is the future I, I, I asked you what you thought and, and you led us right to the uh, what we do for a living, what contractors and distributors do for a living, is provide solutions. Now we don't provide just products, and you have to really and truly uh, work at that and learn it. But it's it's really good when you have a product portfolio that lets you do it at different levels. I, I think uh, we use the, the the triangle thing where everybody fights over the top, you know, one you know tenth of, of the market for these big integrated buildings and smart connected buildings, and, and they're important too for the I think for the big players. But the real market the real untapped market is that five million buildings that we need to get products uh, to these uh, building owners and facility managers that really solve their problems at the lowest level so i think what the kmc does is they provide that that portfolio uh, that gets you in the door with maybe a commander but then from there you can build once you put that commander in there you can integrate anything imaginable it's all data on the network and so the the opportunities i think that are there for contractors and distributors is to learn the game better get started, maybe and make you, I wouldn't, I don't know about giving the services, you know, or the commander away. I, I, I'm, I don't know how you make money when you do that, unless you, you might be better at service work than me, but we make a living by selling solutions. And, and, uh, but I think KMC is doing a great job. You guys are showing leadership in the market. And the question I, I think I'm bearing down on is what do you have next? What's next up? Is it just going to be refinement on some of your product platforms? Or do you have some knockout punch that you're going to release soon product wise? Well, you know, there's um, there, there's always enhancements to Commander. I think um, one of the more recent ones is is a product called Node Red. If you haven't heard of Node Red, it's a very common language in the IT space. Uh, it is uh, the next phase of Commander that we're moving to. Uh, so that's that's coming out. Awesome. There's there's always products uh, that are in development. Those kind of things never stop. They can't, and that's the nature of the beast. Um, we've had a very venerable product for us over the years called FlexTech. Uh, and the Flexstat has been sold in an OEM space. It's been sold over the counter. We have a number of those installed at National Accounts. It's a very large drugstore chain. I won't mention the name, but it literally has thousands of those things installed. Um, we're going to be coming up with a new version of the Flexstat. It'll be a nice color touchscreen display. Uh, have some neat features. It's IP based as well as MSTP based, and we're going to be showing that at the uh, HR show 2020 in Orlando. Wow, that sounds great. It bodes well. It looks like uh, KMC has really done their homework. I, uh, I applaud you guys. Uh, we we um, we can't help but recognize the success you've made and the growth. You know, it's it's always good to see a group of successful people, engineers uh, at heart, taking the solution side of the the market and sharing and sharing it with us. Because I I think I, every time I've gone to one of your meetings, I've, I've been benefited by it as a as a business owner. And and the next time I have to get up in front of people and try to sell them and get them started. It's always good to have these good reference points. Well, thank you. Well, it is. And, of course, the Control Trends community has recognized uh, you guys uh, over the years at the Control Trends Awards, uh, you know, numerous awards, everything from Richard Newberry being uh, 
uh, you know, executive of the year, Dave Bowman and your tech support guys. One, I think you've even won a couple, haven't you, Doug? I'm not one yet, no, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that day, Eric. Well, there you go. Well, you know, you, you and I would probably be competing for best looking ball guy in the, in the industry, but no, no, you, you know, you should definitely be on that list. But uh, you guys have been great about supporting the Control Trends Awards, too. So thank you so much for that. But uh, sort of getting along the lines, you know, Kenny, the scalability of the product. I mean, if you go from Commander, you go up to Conquest. And, uh, you know, walk our community a little bit through Conquest because that really does allow you to go from, you know, the, the, the 5 million buildings up to compete with that 1% of the triangle like, you know, Kenny's talking about. Right. Well, the, the Conquest is, is a hardware product line. And um, when we, we brought Conquest out a few years back now, the goal with Conquest was to simplify its design and selection. Um, one of the things that was always a challenge in our industry when we brought somebody on board uh, was you know there's all these different part numbers and I'm a new guy and I'm trying to figure out engineer my first job and oh man I got this many air handlers and these many VAV boxes and all these other ancillary devices and what do I pick and what do I put on and make it all work and so we sim we simplified it we said you got a unitary controller a VAV controller or a general purpose controller and we narrowed it down to three devices we've simplified it from that perspective all of our devices are advanced application controllers uh, which means that they'll come from the factory with pre-programmed algorithms in them. But if you decide you want to change them or add a side loop to control an exhaust fan or interlock some radiation or something like that, it's simplistically able to do that. Probably one of the bigger things that we did with that, though, and this kind of alludes back to your infamous photo uh, with the name tag in the background, but um, if your our viewers are familiar with RFI uh, or Near Field Communications, We've embedded an RFID chip in all of our new Conquest Control products. And what that allows you to do is take an app from your smartphone and you can lay your phone on top of the box while it's still in the factory packaging and unpowered and be able to configure that device right from your smartphone. And that's cool. that's the first time I saw that, it was kind of spooky. I thought, how, how, does, that, how does that work? <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. That was yeah, a heat pack, I think. Yes. The, the battery in your pow on your phone powers the RFID chip. And, uh, you know, again, where it's really been a value add for our customers, it, it costs X amount of dollars to make the product, right? I mean, it costs X amount of dollars to populate a circuit board, you know, put it inside a, an enclosure, load it up with software, and send it out the back. There's only so much we can do out of that, out of that from a cost reduction perspective. Where we can really bring value to our partners is by cutting the amount of, of field installation time it takes. Because that's always their biggest variable in putting a project together is how long it's going to take to actually do this. So as an example, you know, let's say you got a 20 VAV box job. Well, the way we always did that in the past was, you know, a technician would take the 20 controllers out of the box and put them on a table and wire the communication loop to them all and power them all up. And then he'd plug in his laptop and he'd upload the program into all those devices. And if the tech was really good, he could probably pull off a 20 box job in, in four to six hours. Now he can do it in 40 minutes. So it's a tremendous labor savings, and we've incorporated all those features in, into the product. So we made them easier to pick, easier to set up and program, easier to commission, easier to get online. No, no, you're right. It makes it more predictable because, like you said, the installation is the unpredictability part of it. And most of your stuff connects with Cat5 as well now? Correct. Yeah, we offer MSTP, which is the way we've always done it. You know, the industry as a whole has always done it for years. And then Ethernet connectivity, backnet over IP, and that, that's been an interesting transition for us. You know, we, we offered IP controllers starting about three years ago, and we kind of thought, okay, well, we'll see what the acceptance rate is in the marketplace. And uh, from a manufacturing perspective, it ramped up a lot faster than we thought it was going to, which tells us, kind of tie in our conversation together, of, you know, IoT, the age of connectivity, uh, intelligence at the edge, that's moving at a lot faster pace than I think we realize it is sometimes. <laughs> No, 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 agreed. And, and the other thing too, I, I do want to get back to the simplistic thing about, uh, you know, simplistic but powerful about Conquest because again, you know, you got the near field communication for your VAV controllers, you got your unitary controller, your, uh, and then your, um, uh, what I would call plant controller, I think you used a different term for it, is kind of cool. It's eight inputs, eight outputs, but it's expandable up, up to 40. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of cool because all those things come with pre-factory program algorithms if you want to use them. You don't have to. Again, you can either do line or block programming with any of those. But for that expansion, I mean, you got little cards that you just put in the slots, right? So yeah. you, 
you know, particular application pre programming put the little cards in and you're good to go. So that's got to really knock the installation time down and, and, and the potential for uh, an installer to make an error down a bunch, I would think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the HOA cards um, are, are great. I mean, they get used quite frequently. Um, owners love them just from the perspective of, you know, if a guy's got a damper that's not opening, right, he can he can put that card in and flip it to manual and, you know, turn the pot. And if, if the damper opens, then he knows he's got a software problem. If the damper doesn't open, then he knows, oh, okay, well, you know, I've got a mechanical issue there, right? Um, they're great on construction jobs because a lot of times the air balancer, wants to get started before the job's going to be ready to go or you haven't written the control sequence yet for the air handler, you can plug that card in. He can dial the VFD to go whatever he wants it to be at and start his air balance. Very cool. Very well, cool. And, uh, Doug, I just wanted to say something. Uh, Eric and I had just recently returned from uh, an overseas uh, trade show, and we were listening to the European uh, version of our BAS and how it was evolving. Hmm. They called it IT-based uh, uh, BAS. No more uh, of the, uh, you know, they, they were making fun of the telephone wires, the MST <laughs> wired. And, and, you know, it was kind of a revelation that, you know, we, we hear a different perspective on how other uh, people in, in different parts of the world, our, current, our common currency is buildings. And we're all pushing air and water through buildings uh, uh, that, that, you know, but the different styles. But to, to hear what you just said there is very consistent with what we heard over in Europe. And that is, the IT, the IP based controllers are going to have, a, 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 you know, almost a, an advancement. It's going to be exponential to growth in the years to come because as we become more and more familiar with the, the networks and, and less and less intimidated by IT, uh, we're going to take advantage of that bandwidth and all those other increased uh, features. One question I had when we talk about IP and uh, is, is the security. How, how, what's your thoughts about uh, when we use more and more IP controllers, are we taking greater risks or are we actually putting those controllers on a network that's really and truly secure because the IT professionals have full access to it and they're going to make sure that if it's on their network, it's secure. Yeah, and I think that's a very good statement, Ken. And that's, again, something that we think that we kind of came across in the command, the early days of Commander. We started dealing with IT departments in there, again, very concerned with security. And as we transition from the MSTP, the IT-based controllers, we are getting involved with IT departments. And by the very nature of what they do, they're much more stringent on security, and that rolls down to us as well. Um, so I think the fact that we're underneath the IT umbrella in that arena, I think is definitely helping to secure the networks. And if nothing else, it makes them feel better about it. Sure. Yeah, well, I agree. And then you're not, uh, there's no duplicity and there's no, uh, I thought you were doing it or whatever, whatever. I mean, in other words, to me, that over, over the, like, especially on an enterprise level or, you know, larger, you know, maybe the mush market people, university schools and hospitals, you know, where they've got a department, you know, having them. So what I mean is it, I think we're going to see more collaboration between our our technicians, our building automation specialists, our master systems integrators, and our distributors are going to become more and more. This conversation we're having now next year will sound uh, almost, you know, antiquated because by then we'll all have IT experience uh, and, and, you know, we're going to grow. Mm -hmm. and one last thing I wanted to say before uh, is that you guys also have a tremendous product portfolio with valves, actuators, and all that good stuff. We've we focused uh, about 95% of this on to your high level uh, your solutions, but you guys make some dang good products. Tell us about your what else do you have? Do you have sensors? I mean, you have it all. You have A to Z. KMC is actually a, 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 one of the manufacturers that literally can provide the smallest sensor to the most, uh, you, know, co you know, complicated control and, and, and building automation system. Yeah, and, and you know, we, we, we talk to people about this a lot. I mean, we're in the midst right now of um, we're doing a major push with consulting engineers. Um, our sales force is getting out there, and we're getting in front of consultants, and we're doing about 16 of those a month right now, so we're really making a focus in that market. And I think one of the things we talk about in that is the fact that we really do offer a soup and nuts offer. We're the only American-made, U.S.-based manufacturer that offers you everything from basic controllers, pneumatics. We still make a ton of pneumatics, okay? You talked about it a little bit earlier. All the way down to sensors, valves, uh, relays, any type of accessory device, ancillary device that you might want to get, actuators. Um, we, we just kind of cover everybody's soup to nuts. We can even sell you an enclosure to put the system in if you need it. There we go. <laughs> That's very, Good very stuff. cool. All right. Well, Doug, listen, uh, I know we're going to have a lot of people in our community that are going to want to know more about KMC and, and how to get involved. Uh, what's the, you know, what's their next step? So I'm, I'm a service contractor or I'm a systems integrator or I'm a distributor. What, what's their next step to get more involved with you guys? 
Uh, I, the simplest way to do it is you can either you can either reach out to us the old-fashioned way and call us, or you can go to our website. Um, and there, there's a, a page there that you can fill out if you want more information. That gets electronically submitted. Those come to me. I'll filter those out, and myself or someone from your organization, depending on the nature of your question, will reach out to you. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Doug, man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. KMC, man, great products, great people, and uh, good times if you go to one of their events. So. Yeah, thank you so much again. Uh, you guys are really, I said it before, but you're iconic in our industry. And the fact that you uh, allowed me this time to spend with you, uh, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Our pleasure. Our uh, pleasure. Very well. well, listen, I'm hoping we can get you to come back on. You've been a great guest. So what do you say we try to get get every six months or so you come back on the show, tell us what's going on? I would be more than happy to do that. All right, brother, man. I appreciate awesome. it. All right, Doug Miller, KMC Controls. All right, man, Kenny, great stuff from Doug, man. Super good guy, man. i tell you what, I, I've worked with him over the years. He's a class act, so uh sure he's a class company. Man, we got some other posts to get to before you and I get busy. What's What's, what's next? <laughs> Well, uh, you know, it's uh, I always take a pause, I'll, I'll pause while, when I make these statements about, you know, how we talked about some incredible uh, solutions and products in the market and five million buildings, you know. But uh, one thing I remember from my earliest days in, in controls was uh, pen products, uh, pen regulator valves, uh, you know, A19s. Uh, all those pen products were so – I remember just the quality of them then, you know. And now we've got, uh, you know, pens still, they, they had their 100th anniversary. And uh, it's, it's, it's very exciting to see how they're making another marketing thrust and keeping themselves fresh in everybody's mind. But they make the most reliable, simple products, electromechanical controls, temperature controls, electronic temperature controls, modular digital controls, and water valves. And again, uh, you know, I've sold these things uh, in my entire you know, career in the industry and, and never thought twice. They always had high quality, you know, just they work and they're very simple and, and they're going to last another 100 years. That's great stuff. And we were actually at that party, Kenny. Remember at the aquarium, Georgia Aquarium? We sure. covered it for control tents. We got footage up there. But uh, what they're doing too, Kenny, is they're making those now where they can communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, Johnson Controls, they got the Varuses, which is a light commercial system that now can talk to those. So it makes it easy to get that data and information out. And pretty much, man, you know, that you got a bunch of places you can buy it, but why wouldn't you just buy it from either DMS Controls dot com or uh, stromquest dot com. Right. Yeah, that, well, that's a, that another part of the the post is that they're available at your local distributor. These are the bread and butter things that you go to, yeah, and we're uh, local, local to everybody on the planet. <laughs> that's our goal, man. We want to be uh, what's it ubiquitous? Isn't that ubiquitous? The word? That's everywhere. That's word. So we're everywhere ubiquitous. all the time. Ubiquitous. Yeah, we can be everywhere all the time. All right. Thanks to the magic of the internet, Bill Gates. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I did like that post, by the way. And, uh, you know, you said something about would I jumped on that if I heard that. Heck no. I had my head. Uh, I didn't know where my head was at. But 1974, I, I graduated. But check this out. I actually went to the first computer class at our high school. And they were making a big fuss about it. And I walked up and I listened to about a half hour. I actually volunteered to, whatever. I signed up to go see the first computer at our high school was plugged in. And it was like all the – the brainiacs and nerds were there and they were just all excited about what was going on. You know, the fact that they were talking to somebody else somewhere else. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> I got things to do. I got to get out of here. And you know, that means well, had I had, I had influence, maybe, maybe if you were there, you say, hey, we, we got to get into this. We got to learn this yeah, stuff. I, you know? I, I wouldn't have said that at all, man. I, I thought we got to play pinball or foosball or something like that. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking about. So, so, but, you know, but here we are now, you know, so many years later and, uh, uh, probably a little bit wiser, you know, but yeah, um, we, we wish we would have, could have, should have, but uh, yeah. So that, uh, so any, that, but taking this thing uh, in some sort of a stretch, we're going to, we're going to jump to national cybersecurity and the national cybersecurity center of excellence. And they're having a workshop and it's on June 13th, 2019. Now the reason why this was an important post that I thought is because it's all about IPv6 enabled enterprise workshop. Now, we know that IPv4, IVP4 looked like it could never be exhausted. But the most incredible statistic here is how many internet connections there are in the world and how we need to, um, we need to get a whole bunch more. We're actually uh, are, we're hitting the ceiling of, of how many uh, IP addresses are available. So uh, the public input of this is, is, is pretty if, interesting, but I thought maybe somebody like Fred Gordy or somebody might might have interest in this to see what what's going on, but they have the uh, 
you register on our website. We have a short form to register June. Uh, you know, you have to register by June 11th. It's June 13th. And then if you go to the bottom of that post, you'll see that there's an improving mobile authentication for public safety and first responders. So of all the places you wouldn't think cybersecurity might make, uh, you know, we're, we're, you wouldn't think people would, would mess around with it or whatever. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, video about making these uh, communication uh, capabilities more secure. So it's a very interesting post. Very, very cool. Take man. a look at it, yeah. Mm -hmm. it for sure. And then, dude, our man Brent Burroughs, young gun Brent Burroughs, uh, who is with NTech. He's one of the young control techs, rising superstars in uh, HVAC and smart building controls. Put together an awesome video on how to reset a Jace 8000 controller. Uh, and we included a bunch of commonly asked questions regarding the Jace. So hopefully it's kind of a definitive piece that you can use. Uh, speaking of Brent, Kenny, his wife, I think, went into labor yesterday. They're expecting their first child, baby boy Burroughs. And I've suggested that a great name for the baby boy would be uh, Eric Kenneth Burroughs. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is, he's a good guy. And, you know, to do that under those uh, domestic uh, pressures, uh, we wish him all the best, you know, and that's exciting as can be. Brent, I'm but, a neighbor. I need to go to the hospital. Just a minute, honey. Yeah, I'm almost done. <laughs> well, and, you know, here's, here's what's cool about that. And I, I wrote, uh, I, I try to give him a good, uh, uh, you know, kudu on, on the LinkedIn, uh, because here's why. We probably get that question asked, like you say, once a week, uh, whatever, once. And we normally send an attachment. And it normally works. And then somebody will read it and then they end up having a bad day and, and they didn't, you really, you know, they still want somebody to help them. If you watch this video and you just stop it and do what he says to do, it will walk you through as well as ever, I've, 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 of any presentation I've seen so far. That is a heck of a good quality, um, you know, tech demo tape that uh, we can refer people to. So, I mean, it's a, it's a great ad library added to the technical library of control trends, but uh, thank you, Brent. That's a good yeah, post. Awesome, buddy. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. And then, you know, our last post of the week, Kenny was, uh, you know, Brent has joined forces with Aaron Gorka. Uh, there's a podcast that we promote called next generation innovation, which is, you know, kind of uh, HVAC smart body controls from a younger person's perspective. And they kind of screwed this episode up because they interviewed an older guy, but I think he held his own pretty good. But uh, actually, I had <laughs> to up at Control Con. It was kind of cool because we got busted with security. I wonder what the hell we were doing. And so you get to see sort of a little bit a day in the life of a podcaster. But it was, it was a great episode. And what we really focused on, Kenny, we focused on social media. And what became really apparent to me is that um, – uh, most people, and so a couple things. So I, as you know, I've been paying a bunch of bucks to study with uh, copywriting with a company called Agora Financial, which is the top copywriting company on the planet. They make billions of dollars for people. And I'm a firm believer, we've talked about this a lot on the show, that uh, correct theory plus effort equals profound results, right? You can have all the effort in the world, but if you don't have the correct theory, then you're not going to be successful. And I'm pretty much convinced that uh, our industry for the most part, okay, for the most part, we're putting a lot of effort in in terms of marketing, but we're not getting the correct theory. So it's kind of a personal mission of mine to uh, understand the correct theory. And, uh, and I think some of the younger people intuitively understand that better. So I think this is a really interesting episode to listen to, if nothing else, from the perspective of how younger people in our industry view and use social media up and you know and i love that about them they asked me they said you know should we because we're producing the podcast for them and they said you know should what should we do so just be yourselves man it's fresh it's interesting it's fresh it's fun it's, they're completely different than us but but they're finding their own voice which is cool and you know and that's part of what we're, we're offering uh because kenny i need to get paid man we've been working this for a decade so now now the 20s <laughs> are going to be good back so we're making no bones about it we want to create value for the community so one of those Potential options is uh, we'll help produce your podcast and promote it for you. We got the Control Trends Podcast Network. We're all already set up and ready to go. So this is a podcast we're producing with Brent and Aaron, and we can produce yours too. But uh, it's interesting, Kenny. So one you know basic thing. So I'm reading this uh, article from a, a pretty big magazine, industry magazine. It's about you know how to use social media, and it's saying stuff like. Uh, well, you know, here's some ideas for posts. You could post pictures like your, the employee, your employee of the month. Post pictures of your and, and talk about your company mission, your company values. Focus, uh, uh, focus uh, 
post pictures, cute pictures of your employees' kids and stuff like that. I'm going, that's the worst friggin' advice you could possibly have. Nobody <laughs> cares about that, okay? So what I will tell you right away, there's only one radio station. If you're marketing or selling or talking to anybody, there's only one radio station you need to listen to, which is called WIIFM. What's in it for me? Because we are all so inundated with information that if you're going to be successful in marketing or sales or whatever, you need to cut straight to the chase. What's in it for them? Nobody cares how cute your kid is. I mean, they might want, but if that's what you've got on your Facebook page or your Instagram account and stuff like that, people are not going to pay attention. You have to be solving a problem that they have. And so, again, it's, it's kind of like, you know, remember in the early days we learned about, you know, features, benefits. So much of what I'm seeing comes out is, is all the features of this stuff, but the benefits, some people talk about the benefits. Doug talked about, you know, the benefits on, on uh, the interview we just had, Doug Miller from KMC. But it's how can you even, you got to start with that. You really have to start with what problem is it solving? And here's the other thing that most people are making a mistake at. You start with one problem because just find their biggest problem and that's what you're, you know, everything else is a bonus. Anyway, I'm going on and on. We're going to be writing more about this and bringing more about this out. We're actually doing an email uh, newsletter for, about marketing that we're going to start. You can sign up on the Control Tent website for that. But I could go on for hours about this, Kenny. But it is uh, really interesting, the theories that the successful people are using uh, in marketing sort of across the board. So, Well, I don't have to say anything dumb and, or benign, like the uh, music changing, you know, from the uh, – generation to generation and each generation having, you know, some sort of a, uh, you know, criticism or, or lack of, uh, you know, appreciation for the, the newer generation's music, you know, but this isn't like that. This is, this is more important. This is dialogue of, of an industry and, and we're seeing the, uh, the importance of social media is there's learning involved. Almost like the, uh, we're talking about the Brent's, uh, how to reset a Jace using, you know, that, that's basically, to me, that's social media. To me, that, that video he made, putting that up on YouTube and putting it on control trends and whatever, that to me is engaging sense, so, so, social media. And it's so effective, so much more effective than if sending a piece of paper and reading it off, uh, off a PDF, you know. No, totally, totally that. But what Brent did, does is really interesting because a lot of people put videos that are just technical videos, mm -hmm. and those are fun too. But, and that, you know, if you can only do one thing, have it be technical right? It's got to be useful. It's got to be something they can use. But what Brent does so well is he's also engaging. He's somebody who's interested to listen to. There's a guy on uh, YouTube, AKHVAC, I think it's the guy. He's got like 40,000 followers. He's a guy who gets it because he's, he's, he brings his personality into it, but at the sure. same time, he's creating value. And listen, part of what Kenny and I are, are gearing up to offer here too is, is we want to be your go-to source for if you need help on social media, you know, how to do things. You know, we're going to be in a position to help you with that if you're interested in that. But I think the one thing we can say for sure is social media is not going away. Uh, you know, you're going to, I don't know anybody that's not using it. I don't know too many people, including my company, Strompa, this, this not using it, this using it well. I mean, I'm looking at what I'm learning. And again, I'm spending a lot of money to learn this stuff. And I'm studying with some of the best people on the planet to learn how to do this. And I look at our stuff. It's Trump listen, we're, we're like everybody else. We're a me too. We're not doing anything that's going to be overly engaging or is going to attract people in. And that's what you got to do. You got to rise above the noise because there's so much out there. And as one of the sayings is uh, what stands out gets in. So with that, we, you know, we'll talk more about this as we go on. If you're interested, we'll be putting the marketing newsletter out so you can sign up for that at uh, controltrends.com. And with that, Kenny Smyers, man, I think, I think we got to call it a week here, man, because what's in it for well, me radio, right? Well, honest. yeah, but I want to do real two quick ones. One is I wanted to ask or just make a statement. I saw something that came through uh, Thursday last week, and it says, any quotations, including this email, are for material – only and does not address any material surcharges relevant to SEC 232 tariff. All tariff charges will be billed at the time of order, not to exceed 25% of the total value of material. And I was just wondering about Control Trends community. What if, does that mean, Kenny? I'm telling you, something's up, something's going on. So I got a quote from somebody, and, and then I quoted somebody, and, and I, I thought I better put that same warning on the bottom of my quote because – What's happening? So Control Trends World out there, community, tell us if you have any uh, any experiences on that so we can keep uh, on track. But I've heard different things, Eric. I've heard the, the different uh, tariffs are coming in now. They're finally starting to show uh, posts. I know we've paid some uh, tariff 
uh, surcharges, and, and, then, and they're, they're considerable. One, one was like 13%, one was like 22%. So I'm just wondering, you know, how's that going to impact everything? And the last thing I want to do was uh, Cone out there from uh, the uh, our European, yeah, just from Label 4 Visuals. Uh, Cohen and Bo have uh, a little short uh, teaser video from the EIO um, conference from Amsterdam, and we're going to be posting that uh, real soon here. So oh, nice, uh, nice. Thank man. you, Cohen. And then they're going to have a full vote. He said we got a full verse video coming up, but uh, it's just kind of neat because I mean that, that was a heck of a two and a half, three day uh, you know event, and it was a beautiful place. Amsterdam was just remarkable, European, and yet, uh, and it was so. Uh, condensed as far as the technical and networking things. So it was a great, great event. Great and uh, we're already looking forward, forward to the next one. Where's that going to be? Uh, I'm not sure where that's going to be, but I think you gave me a great segue into, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week for this show, EasyIO. It's EasyIO.com. They call it easy for a reason. And DG Lux. I mean, you know, it's, you know, you know, it's, some of my girlfriends used to say, if you can't be good, at least sound good. If you can't sound good, at least look good. And I think that uh, DG Lux does all three of those. So be sure to check them out. We'll have uh, links in the website for you guys. Actually, there's a banner ad on the side of Control Trends for both EasyIO and for DG Lux. So be sure to check Right. And DG Lux is offering a you know, 30-day trial of, uh, of the DG Lux 5. And, and I think if, if, if you give it that a whirl, take, it, take a spin and, and see, what happens, see, see if you like it. Yeah, no, absolutely, for sure. So, well, that's cool, Kenny Smyer. So with that, buddy, should we do our outro? Yeah. Okay. So here you go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my announcer's voice on because I'm practicing for the Control Trends Awards. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's another week on Control Talk. Now, your Smart Buildings video pass and podcast for the week ending June 9th, 2019. He is Ken Smyers, the man, the myth, the legend. I am his sidekick, Eric Stromkos. We appreciate you tuning in. Remember, be bold, stay in control. Be sure to listen to WIIFM Radio, What's In It For Me Radio, when you talk to your customers this week. So be bold, stay in control, and stay relevant. Indeed, Eric. Well done. E. Kenny Smurfs. That's like a field goal, too, now. I mean, now we're, getting, we're talking about the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Remember the days? I, hey, we used to play the football thing where you slid across the table, and you had to come over the edge, and you had to flip it. And if you did, that was the best time you needed. Did you have a pass on this that, that's, that's what you did. You did. You know, that, that's what I was doing. Instead of going to a computer class, I was playing.